This was a requested tutorial. The first thing we need to do is make the texture seamless. I'll be using a wood plank texture. If you want to use the same texture, the download link is in the description. I'll be making a 1K texture, that is 1024 by 1024. Make a new document that is 1024 by 1024 with a transparent background. I drag the texture into GIMP and scale it so I have the black part on each side. Now all I need to do is go to Filters, Map, Tile Seamless. I leave everything as their defaults and click OK. I now make a new 1024 by 1024 document and copy this texture onto the new document. I scale it down to 512 by 512 and make three duplicates. I can see that my texture is seamless. I export this image as a PNG. This is the color or albedo texture map. I can now make a new document that's 1024 by 1024 and copy and paste the seamless texture onto the new document. I'll now make a normal map using a plugin. The link is in the description. To make the normal map, I just go to Filters, Map, Normal Map. The only change I make is to the filter, and I change this to the 9x9 option. I export this image as a PNG. This is the normal texture map. I make a new document that's 1024 by 1024 and copy and paste the original texture onto the new document. To make the specular map, I go to Filters, Edge Detect, Neon. I leave everything at their defaults. I then desaturate the colors by going to Colors, Desaturate, Desaturate. I'll use the mode of luminance. I now go to Colors, Brightness and Contrast and turn the brightness all the way down and click OK. I export this image as a PNG. This is the specular texture map. I make a new document that's 1024 by 1024 and copy and paste the original texture onto the new document. It's important to note that any bright area of the texture will be metallic and any dark areas will be non-metallic. I then desaturate the colors by going to Colors, Desaturate, desaturate. I will use the mode of luminance. I can make further adjustments by going to colors, levels. If I move the white color stop to the left, the texture will become brighter, meaning a more metallic look. If I move the black color stop to the right, the texture will become darker meaning little or no metalness. Since this is wood, I'll pull the black color stop to the right.
I export this image as a PNG. This is a metal mist texture map. I make a new document, this 1024 by 1024, and copy and paste the original text drawn to the new document. It's important to note that any bright area of the texture map will be rough and any dark areas will be glossy. I then desaturate the colors by going to Colors, Desaturate, Desaturate. And I'll use the mode of luminance. I can make further adjustments by going to Colors and Levels. If I move the black color stop to the right, the texture will become darker, meaning a more glossy look. If I move the white color stop to the left, the texture will become brighter, meaning a more rough look. Since this is wood, I'll pull the white color stop to the left. I export this as a PNG. This is the roughness texture map. Now note, if you need a glossy map, you can use this map and simply invert it. I make a new document that's 1024 by 1024 and copy and paste the original texture onto the new document. It's important to note that any bright areas on the texture map will be extruded outward and any dark areas will be extruded inward. I then desaturate the colors by going to Colors, Desaturate, Color to Gray. I'll use the default options. I then go to Colors and Levels. If I move the white color stop to the left, the texture will become brighter, meaning the surface will be extruded outward. If I move the black color stop to the right, the texture will become darker, meaning the surface will be extruded inward. Since this is wood, I'll pull the black color stop to the right. I then go to Colors and Curves and bend the top third of the curve to the right to make the dark colors a bit darker. I export this image as a PNG. This is the height texture map. I make a new document that's 1024 by 1024 and copy and paste the original texture onto the new document. It's important to note that any bright area of the texture map will be well lit and any dark areas will be in shadow. I then desaturate the colors by going to Colors, Desaturate, Color to Gray. I'll use the default options. I then go to Colors and Levels. If I move the white color stop to the left, the texture will become brighter, meaning the surface will be well lit. If I move the black color stop to the right, the texture will become darker, meaning the surface will be more in shadow. Since this is wood, I'll pull the color stop to the left. I then go to Colors and Curves and make an S-curve to balance out the lighter and darker areas.
I export this image as a PNG. This is the AO map. I open Blender and add a plane. I scale the plane up and apply the scale. I make sure I'm in Material Preview. If you're following along, make sure you have the Node Wrangler installed. I split the viewport and open the Shader Editor. I make a new material for the plane. I select the principal shader and I use Control Shift T to open the folder where the maps are located. I then select all of my maps. I can now make any adjustments as needed.